Hello everyone, my name is Lance with Left Beer Design. In this video I'm going to show you how to configure a Novatel Smart MR10 receiver as a base station. So I've got the configuration software here and PuTTY, which is just a terminal emulator on the right. I'm going to change the COM port speed to 57600 and connect to COM1. Uh, I have two serial ports from the receiver going to the computer. I'm going to use COM1 on the computer and the receiver as the management port and I'm going to use COM2 to send the correction data from the receiver to the computer in this case which uh, normally would go to an N-trip caster or uh, a radio or serial port or so, something somehow to get it to the rovers but for the sake of this example I'm just going to dump that data into a terminal session so that you can see data moving so with the, with the uh, receiver connected to COM1 here uh, let's start with going to position status and there's nothing here because there's no messages being logged I'm going to turn on a GGA log that way we can see what's going on on the receiver currently the receiver is running just as an autonomous rover just GPS fix only um, so the first thing we need to do is configure this receiver to be a base station to do that we go to the configuration tab uh, then to receiver settings and function rover or base station and as I said by default it's a rover we're going to change this to a fixed base station with a permanent mount let's just assume this base station is mounted to a cement structure somewhere that's going to be permanent so I'm going to select that uh, if you knew what the latitude longitude and heading or uh, excuse me latitude longitude and altitude of the antenna was you could manually type that in uh, in our case we're just going to let, let it do a self survey now the default is 48 hours which is good for a permanent mounted solution uh, since we're just doing a video we're just going to go with one minute because accuracy repeatability isn't really what we're going for here uh, for this demonstration if you were using a tripod mounted receiver you would want to use the uh, the one minute uh, timeline which is effectively what it does on a tripod because every time it boots up there it has to figure out where it is before it can start broadcasting correction data out so with the uh, one minute positions survey in there if we go back to the position status tab we can watch this and and within a few seconds here this will roll from GPS fix to a manually entered position so what it's doing is collecting GPS position points and it's going to average them uh, effectively an average and decide where it wants to consider the fixed latitude longitude and altitude that it's going to use when it determines uh, correction data that it's going to send out so as you just saw it, it rolled over to manual input mode, which is good, so it's now running as a base station. So now we need to get correct data out of the receiver. Uh, to do that, we need to go to the configuration tab, go back to the main configuration screen. Oh wait, before we do that, um, let's stop the self-survey. That way, uh, when you reboot the receiver, it won't do another one. It will maintain the one it's on right now. So self-survey is complete, disable self-survey, hit set, and then that saves that. Let's go back to the main configuration screen and hit save. So now the uh, fixed latitude, longitude, and altitude are saved to the flash memory so it will resume doing this next time it boots up. Um, if you're permanently mounting this receiver it's also a good idea to, to document the latitude, longitude, and altitude in case you ever have to change something on the receiver like you know wipe it and, and start over from, with a fresh configuration on it for some reason. If you have this documented, then you won't see any position drift before and after that, um, that change. So, yeah, write that down somewhere. So back on the configuration screen, main, the main configuration screen, go to port settings. And we're currently connected to COM1 up here, but we want to use COM2 for the uh, correction data. So hit next. And we're going to change the baud rate to something faster than 9600. I'm going to change it up to uh, 57600 and hit set and currently there is nothing being transmitted on this this receiver was just uh, fresh off of a fa factory reset so there's nothing going on if we look at the output logs there's nothing here and if we connect to that port uh, we're going to use serial com2 and putty and at 57600 and if I hit open it will show me nothing because there's no data coming into that putty session yet. So back to COM2 if we do the auto configure 
you could manually type some of this stuff in, but there's a lot of settings to type, so we're just going to use a script. And we want to generate RTK correction data, RTCM version 3, GPS, and GLONASS. So here are all the commands that you would have to type in if you didn't want to run the script automatically. And, and the reason for the script being handy is things like the RTCM 1004 message type. I mean, this stuff's really hard to keep memorized what you need here, so the script makes that handy. When you hit run, all those commands get sent to the receiver, and the receiver starts generating correction data, which is what you see here now. Um, note that the correction data stream is actually binary data, and PuTTY is trying to display it as ASCII, which is why you get letters and characters and things. But since it's not actually ASCII data, it's not readable, it's just gibberish. But uh, the whole reason for having the telnet session, or excuse me, the, the terminal session here is that you can just see that data is moving, even though you don't know what the data is. So that's RTCM version 3 data. Now for fun, let's uh, set it up to do CMR plus data. So back on the uh, auto configure script, let's choose the script that does uh, CMR plus, GPS, and GLONASS. And you'll notice that it's a different list of commands here. When we run that, we will now get CMR plus correction data out of this, which is uh, again binary data, not readable, but it's data. And uh, from this point, instead of having your uh, PuTTY session or hyperterminal or whatever you're using for a terminal program reading the data, you want to instead pipe that data into a radio or a NTRIP caster or something like that so that you can get that data to the, the rovers. Now the last step, and this is very important, go back to the main configuration screen and hit save configuration. This way if you reboot the receiver it will continue to do what it's doing right now. That's it. That's all you have to set for, uh, for configuring a base station. That's, that's really it. You tell the receiver that it's, it's going to run as a base station and let it determine what its fixed position is. And then you go into the ports and you tell it uh, whichever port you want correction data out of. And you just tell it what output messages you want it to log and at what interval. And that's it. So, thanks. Have a great day.